The first thing that you want to do is make sure that there's no hazards uh, that may injure yourself or the patient. Uh, if there are any hazards, try and remove them. If you can't remove them, try and move the patient away from the hazards. Okay. Um, and then you want to make sure that they are able to protect themselves or you can protect their heads because when people have epileptic seizures, they, complete, they lose complete control of their body. Um, and one of the main things that get hurt is their head. Okay, so try and uh, protect the head from hitting the ground. Okay. Um, after that, you want to place them in the recovery position. Uh, just this keeps the airway open and makes sure that they can maintain their own airway. Basically, the recovery position is turning them in a lateral uh, position, and that way if anything comes into their mouth or they start vomiting, uh, it can leave the mouth uh, by the force of gravity. Uh, after that, you want to call for an ambulance, call for help. Uh, anybody that's medically trained can, can help uh, further and prevent further seizures from occurring. You don't want to put anything in the person's mouth at all. Uh, usually if you put a spoon in the person's mouth or something hard in the person's mouth, uh, they, their jaws clench quite hard so you can cause their teeth to break. So you want to avoid putting anything in the mouth. Um, rather just let the, rather just let them have the seizure and without uh, intervening too, too much. So epilepsy is one of the most common chronic neurological disorders globally, affecting people of all ages. An estimated 50 million people worldwide live with epilepsy. And in South Africa, epilepsy affects one in every 100 people. Now, fear, discrimination, stigma and misconception still surrounds this condition. Now, International Epilepsy Day is marked on February the 11th to raise awareness about epilepsy and the urgent need for improved treatment, better care, and greater investment in research. Now, you may have questions about these conditions like, can my child still do well at school? What will happen if a seizure strikes while I'm at work? Can I safely live on my own, or do I need a caregiver? Will I be able to drive a car or get employed? Is it curable? Well, today we discuss epilepsy, and we'll be joined in studio by a neurologist from the Verts Donald Gordon Medical Center, the vice chair, co-founder of Epilepsy Awareness South Africa, a social worker from Epilepsy South Africa, and a lecturer and author living with epilepsy to come and share her story with us. Now, be part of the show by asking the panel some questions or simply just sharing your views with us. The number to call is Johannesburg 714-6918 or 6919. You can also tweet us at SABC Health Talk or simply just interact with us on our Facebook page, SABC Health Talk. So sit back, relax, and learn from this bumper show ahead coming to you just after a short break. I'm Dr. Salomo Daung, and this is Health Talk. Life can throw all sorts of surprises at you. Often when you least expect it. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. <laughs> That's why it's important to have medical cover. Me? I didn't want just any medical scheme. I wanted a scheme that I could rely on, that I could talk to at any time, that I could afford. I didn't just get medical aid. I got medical paid. Lemoto yo yi se abanda ba ninza ba fundi leka kulu kutula we. Hindo nonga yenza ena mtanje ui drop out ya se primary school. Go standard five. Relax. I wasn't always this good. I never went to school, so I never had a job. But today, I can make myself and my clients happy thanks to Eguruleni Artisans and Skills Training Center, which offers practical training on bricklaying, boiler making, electrical, and many more. Eguruleni Artisans and Skills Training Center, your gateway to success. And thanks so much for staying with Morning Live. He described as unlawful the publishing of witness testimonies prior to being heard before the commission. It's almost like asking a parent who's your favorite child. But is, is there a moment that stands out for you? We sat and we thought, how can we make blind people enjoy no infinite as well? Because it's television. Transparency International's Corruption Perceptions Index. And uh, out of 180 countries, South Africa coming in at 73. I really hope that, you know, this year is going to be the year of fighting corruption. Our shocking church abuses in the name of religion keep surfacing. It's breaking the law. There's, there's no church that should be allowed to do such things. Get 20,000 rand discount, bachelor's to master's degrees in Santon. It's widespread um, and it's a very lucrative market. The question that we ask, for instance, political parties is where do you get the information? Where do you get 
the cell phone numbers of voters. Thank you so much for choosing us. All right, so, so today we're going to be talking about epilepsy, and we have a host of special guests that we're going to introduce. First up, uh, closest to me is Dr. Prakash Kaden, who is a specialist in neurologist and is based at the Verts Donald Gordon Medical Center here in Johannesburg. Welcome to Health Talk, Dr. Kaden. Hi. All right, and next to him is Linda Des Menezes. I hope I'll be able to say this right, <laughs> who is co founder of Epilepsy Awareness South Africa. Welcome to Health Talk once thank again. Thank you, thank you, Doctor. Thank you for All having right. us. And of course, accompanying uh, Linda is Mohammed Kasim, who is the Vice Chairperson of Epilepsy Awareness South Africa. Welcome to Health Talk. Thank you for having me, Doctor. All right. Before we start our conversation, though, take a look at this. Lebuhang Ramashu is the founder of Simul Home for epilepsy and disabled children in Kalfontein, Midrand. She explains how and why this home was established. Simul Law Home started 2014, and then before starting it, I consulted clinics, hospitals, government, you know, each department I had to go through because I needed a direction. And then hence I got that. Um, they advised me to start home here, and then <coughs> actually it started as a daycare, but it, it never lasted, you know, more than, it, it only took three months for it to be a daycare and they said that you know what like, because we can see the patient in you just at the home and then I then decided you know what let me just get it done. The center is mainly for disabled kids and 70 percent of them are epileptic and require medical care 24 hours according to me. Mostly uh, the kids are disabled, they come with uh, epilepsy, you know, but yeah, that's how it goes. Mostly, or most of them, they, they do have epilepsy. Um, they are on medication for epilepsy. As much as she gets people to volunteer and help, Lebu explains why it is important to also get professional nurses to assist. At first, I will just take people to help out. But now I saw there's a need for me to, to take those are qualified because of if ever I don't do that, I encounter so many problems. And remember, we're dealing with kids' lives. We're dealing, we're dealing with severe lives. You know, they're so sensitive. So we need qualified uh, staff. The home is in dire need for sponsorship. Currently, more than 30 children are housed at Simulo which operates mostly on grant money. I struggled a lot in terms of finances. We need to comply firstly with the health department, you know. So for you to get to do that, to follow that, uh, it needs money for you to, to get, you know, the health permit especially. So we're still under the process, but we still need a lot of money to do some other things, you know. According to Lebu, the environment plays a huge role in controlling epilepsy. Therefore, she encourages parents who are unable to take care of their epileptic kids to send them to centers suited for them. You know, if ever you feel that you need a home, you need help, we are here to help. It's not only Simulo that is there to help. There are some other organizations, but you also need to check what kind of an organization is that, you know, because we differ. And then once you, you find a right one, take the child to the, the, the safety, you know, the place of safety, and then whereby they will feel, you know, um, with uh, they will get love, cared for, you know, things like that. Because once you don't take them again, it's a problem problem for you and to the child as well. Uh, the epilepsy will, will be more. They will have too many seizures. All right, so before we start our conversation, then let's just go through one or two tweets that have just come through. Julie says, epilepsy is so much more than just a seizure. It's a debilitating neurological condition affecting the person and their families. Thousands of years old, yet still so much stigma. Epilepsy doesn't have a face until it's you or someone known. Mm. Okay, and the next one says, Happy Epilepsy Awareness Day 2019. Big shout out to everyone who lives with epilepsy, caretakers, family members, epilepsy doctors, researchers, and the people and organizations that work so hard to spread awareness and understanding about epilepsy. All right, so let's understand this epilepsy then from our special guest. Uh, let me start with you, Dr. Kathan. Um, 
Uh, I'm sure people know about this condition called epilepsy, but let's just go through the basic concept. Sure. Uh, we, you hear terms like uh, epileptic seizure, fit, and whatever. Can, can you just perhaps explain to us if there are any differences and what this condition really is? So epilepsy is a condition where a person has two or more seizures in general. So it's basically the... the uh, if, if someone has two seizures, then they're more likely to have more seizures. Mm. And then a seizure is an excess or um, a synchronized neuronal discharge that, yeah. that's abnormal and results in um, either motor jerks, impairment in consciousness, yeah. uh, loss of urine cont uh, like continence, right. and uh, that type of thing. So okay. We're going we're gonna to come back to the symptoms, but when you say, you know, that complicated term that you used, do you mean the some electrical activity that starts in the brain and gets sent out to the body. Yeah, so what I mean right. is that all the brain cells, yeah. they discharge at the same time, okay. which is not uh, quite normal. Right. And uh, that causes the seizure. Okay. And then epilepsy is uh, when someone is more likely to have seizures. All right. So, so how common is this? Perhaps let's start with, with, with you, Linda. Um, I mean, you you from the organization called Epilepsy Awareness South Africa. First of all, perhaps before we talk about how common this condition is, just tell us about the organization. Our organization, it's, it's quite a small organization. We're four years old. Mm. Um, we started off, um, at Max and I started the, off the organization, which Max is now left to start his own organization. But um, we continued and most of the people, the members, have epilepsy themselves. Mm. So when people approach us or when we're doing awareness projects or school talks or road shows, we already know how to relate to them. And we've been through it ourselves. Yeah. So our Been through it yourself means you're actually living, living with the with condition epilepsy, yourself. epilepsy, yes. All of you? Four of us, yes. Okay. And um, we do road shows, we do school talks, we raise awareness on social media. Right. Um, we have a walk in November because yeah. um, November is Epilepsy Awareness Month. And then on the 26th of March, it's Purple Day. So we raise a lot of awareness also um, around Purple Day. Okay. All right. So, so um, Mohammed, we understand you're the vice chairperson Great. of the organization. What do we know about, you know, the prevalence of epilepsy in South Africa? Well, the prevalence, as you stated in the beginning of the show, is that one in a one in hundred South Africans are affected by epilepsy. Mm. Um, and the thing is... Epilepsy is still frowned upon within the South African society and faces a lot of stigma. Mm. Um, a lot of people believe it's, you know, devil worship and uh, satanistic beliefs and all of those things. So as Epilepsy Awareness South Africa, we try and educate people and say that it is not devil worship or anything of that sort. It is, it is a neurological disorder which can be treated and looked after with the correct medicine. Mm. Mm. And how widespread is this issue of uh, misconceptions and stigmas? And so well, quite frankly, it's it's quite big in South Africa, mm. um, particularly in third world countries. Mm. Um, the ed lack of education uh, supports the, you know, the, the, the notion of spreading incorrect information out there. Mm. And that's, that's how these misconceptions and these stereotypes and biases and prejudices are put out there through, by word of mouth, mm -hmm. particularly in poorer communities with lack of education. Okay. Dr. Kedal, we said that it affects people of all ages. That's right. What, 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 are there any trends, perhaps, do, do children get more affected more than adults, or is that, what's your experience? Well, I, I, I'm an adult neurologist, so I, I see primarily adults or adolescents, right. but uh, it is very common in, 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 in childhood as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a bit different in childhood because uh, the epilepsy sometimes can um, spontaneously stop mm -hmm. or children are, are more likely that their seizures will stop happening at a certain age. Okay. I'm going to come back to that issue of, of children because there's this concept of a seizure, perhaps some, what some people might call a febrile seizure. So the question basically being that are all seizures necessarily epilepsy? But before that, let's take Pearl on the line. Pearl, welcome to Health Talk. Hi, dear. How are you? We're good. How are you, Pearl? Okay, I actually want to ask a question for the lady. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, on the panel. Yeah. Listen, I've been epileptic for eight years, and I just wanted to know 
what is from in the past and I'm getting a seizure and people that not know I'm having epileptic. It's a, a way for them uh, having a tech, you know, a tech to recognize me at the hospital saying that I've got epileptic. I see. That's an excellent yeah. question. Perhaps more, okay, anybody can answer the question, yeah? But well, it was sure. directed at you. Yeah. Okay, so um, what we usually do while our our NPO is to raise awareness and teach people how to use first aid and also to empower people with epilepsy. Like I said, I've got epilepsy myself and to empower people with epilepsy to say it's okay to talk about it. Tell your colleagues, tell your manager. Um, I've told my manager, I've told my colleagues, everyone's comfortable. If I have to have a seizure at work, they know exactly what to do. I'm always talking about epilepsy and I wish other people with epilepsy also did the same. Um, the thing you asked, how can they know that you have epilepsy? You get medical alert bracelets. Um, you can get the cheaper option at a chemist. They do have um, epilepsy bracelets. I think that would be the best. But I would really say, if you have epilepsy, tell, tell your friends, tell your family, because the biggest thing in South Africa is the stigma around epilepsy. And people are scared to talk about it and tell their manager or their colleagues that they're living with epilepsy. All right. So let's get back to that question then. Are all seizures necessarily uh, epilepsy? So, as I said, someone can have a seizure and not have epilepsy because epilepsy is the condition where someone is more likely to get seizures. So if someone has one seizure, they're actually, we, we do not normally treat it unless the EEG um, is abnormal. All right. So, so basically, diagnosis is something that lies in the realm of the medical professionals. So, so anybody out there watching this program, um, you have to take any seizure seriously and take the person to hospital exactly, to yes. get a proper diagnosis. Let's talk about the symptoms. So a, a seizure itself is almost the, it's, it's also the symptom of the seizure. Right. Uh, so s seizures can be divided into two categories. The one is a generalized seizure, and the most commonly recognized seizures, uh, what, which was previously called the grand mal seizure, the uh, generalized tonic-clonic seizure, where uh, someone is usually on the floor and they convulsing, their whole body is jerking, um, and this sometimes results in them becoming blue or th their jaws clenched, mm -hmm. and they're completely unresponsive and it, there's a few stages and it's usually followed by confusion and sleeping, uh, like drowsiness and yeah. that, that would be the one type and then there's another type of generalized seizure which is the absence kind of seizure which is where someone do, is like they would stare into space and, and not be responsive. It's mo uh, it does commonly happen in uh, younger ages, but it persists into adulthood as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then, uh, then there's also the focal types of epilepsy, which is can be motor and uh, usually can be on one side of the body, which is motor jerks. And then it can also be sensory, where someone can feel numbness or uh, tingling. Mm. And it can um, there's a variety. There's also uh, involving uh, cognitive, where someone basically can experience things like deja vu right. and uh, those types of symptoms. So okay. well, let's get it from Mohammed. What type do you have and what type do you normally come across you know, okay. from an organization's so perspective? The, the generalized uh, seizures generally happen quite a lot. Yeah. Um, as a child, I started off with the generalized seizures. I would have convulsions um, and then you know, wake up dazed, uh, confused of where I am and that sort of thing. Um, a lot of the times I was hospitalized for that um, and then for many years it went away up until I was in high school mm. um, and in high school it started off with back spasms um, so that would you know cause my body to sort of convulge into like a little like a little cave in a sense or cave in and then I would go into a convulsion and have uh, like a blackout okay. uh, my high school seizures seem to have lasted longer than my uh, primary school seizures um, but it's been a few good years that I haven't had a seizure, so, okay. yeah. That's a good, okay, I think it's a good point to, to have a break on. When we come back, we we'll continue our discussion on epilepsy. Please stay with us.
Legal hassles? Clientele legal! That's it. We lost. Problems with the neighbors? Clientele legal! <laughs> Rental disputes? Advice on maintenance matters? Drawing up a will? Clientele legal will speak up for you. Clientele Legal not only solved my labor matter, but also restored my confidence, and I walked out there feeling bigger than when I walked in. It's definitely a value for money. I didn't pay a cent. My monthly premiums covered everything. Take it or leave it. Labor issues? Clientele Legal! This is unacceptable. I have rights. Problems with a mechanic? Clientele Legal! You need a lawyer. Professional lawyers. Professional advice at an affordable price. SMS rights to 32281 and we'll call you back. SMS now. On the 7th of February, the season premiere of One Day Leader is coming to a TV screen near you. One Day Leader Season 7 is at 9 p.m. on SABC One Mzanzi for sure. Judges, are you sure <laughs> of, your, of your choices today? One Day Leader, Thursdays at 9 p.m. on SABC One, Sunday for show. Nigeria, the most populous country in Africa and one of the largest economies on the continent going to elections. Being a first-time voter, it's, I should be happy but I'm not happy because the two candidates aren't what I expected. Hey, being a first time voter, I'm very excited because it's not something I've done before. So I want to be able to choose my leader and it's the first time I'm going to do it, so I'm excited. Nigeria decides. Watch SABC News for updates. While observing how things are run at the centre, we managed to talk to one care worker, Metroys. Metroys has been working for Simulo Home for more than three years. At Simulo Home, I'm helping the disability children. We've got disability children. Some of them, they can't walk. Some of them, they are having problem of epilepsy. Epilepsy is the same as the feeds. Some of them, they are HIV positive. We're also helping them. Understanding what to do when one is having a seizure is very important. Matt Joyce shares the do's and don'ts when helping someone who is having a seizure. Mm, if somebody has got epilepsy, he or she, if she's sitting on the chair, I must put her laterally. She must sleep on the right hand side. If she has got something like a belt, I must look, lose a belt or a shoelace. I must untie it because she wants uh, oxygen. She must have oxygen. Bystanders must not come next to him because if they come like this, they will not uh, oxygen. And then after that, I must open the airway. And then if there's a need of water, I must take a syringe and give him uh, some drops of water. And then if I can see that he needs some help, maybe somebody who can assist me, I can call a backup. But when I'm still waiting for a backup, I must put on oxygen on air or a nebulizer to help him to breathe. Dealing with disabled kids can cause communication breakdown. The care workers need to be on high alert as a seizure is a sudden uncontrolled attack. The child is more than 10 years and then he can talk, he can help me because if somebody is starting to have fits, she or he can come and call me to come and help him because she can talk. But if she can't talk, she can't come to help me. But they know if somebody is fitting, they can see, but they can't talk. If they can talk, they will come and call us. Timulo Home is situated in the middle of Kalfontein in Midrand. And unfortunately, the township doesn't have a nearby hospital, which makes it difficult to get immediate medical care. But the care workers are highly skilled and trained to assist the kids while waiting for an ambulance. Our only challenge is when, when you call for backups, when you are waiting for the ambulance, because we don't have a doctor, we, we're working right inside here. And then if the ambulance takes more time, 
now we are having a big challenge but otherwise we don't have challenge because we are giving the medication we can make everything that we're supposed to do for the kids who have got epilepsy taking care of a disabled and epileptic child can be daunting and challenging but according to my choice they too deserve to be loved and taken care of he or she has got the right to live and then she has got the right to be loved if I'm working with the people who have got epilepsy, I must think of them, giving them medication, giving them food, passing them. Everything I must do to them must be the thing that they need. Mm. A right to be loved indeed. All right, so we're talking epilepsy with our special guests. Again, Dr. Prakash Kaden, a neurologist based at the Verge Donald Gordon Medical Center. Linda Des Menezes, co-founder of Epilepsy Awareness South Africa accompanied by Mohamed Kasim, Vice Chair of Epilepsy Awareness South Africa. Now, I believe that we have two tweets that we will go through and a call on the line before we start our, our conversation. If we could just get the tweet up on the screen so we can go over it. And um, whilst preparing to, to get into this discussion, uh, Marisa says, my year with epilepsy has involved my diagnosis over 50 ambulance rides six overnight hospital stays, three medication changes, an induced coma, a miscarriage, a pseudep scare, I'm not sure what that is, and a broken collarbone that had to be surgically repaired. Epilepsy is serious and needs more attention. Couldn't agree with you more. And Kurt says it is time for the epilepsy community to get mad, to organize, to fight back. We remain the second most stigmatized people with the disease. Mental illness is first. Now, even with control, we have three times the average unemployment rate but driven from schools we lose all right so before before we start because you know i mean I, I think most of these some of these tweets really um talk to what i want us to talk about sure. now to say all right what is the long-term sequelae uh, or possible complications of you know um, um epilepsy but before that there's Teresa on the line from johannesburg Teresa, welcome yes sir thank welcome. you Yep. Um, I have seizures uh, yep. during the night, in the early hours of the morning only. Yeah. Um, they tell me that sometimes I have three in a short space of time. And but in the during the day, I can feel it coming. When I feel it, I would rush and get a glass of water and take it. And in the meantime, now I'm taking a tidum. But it's been um, very low this time. Okay, so, so since yes. you've been on Epilim, um, you're not having as many seizures as you used to? Yes, I, I'm just taking Epilim 500. All right. Okay. Yeah. Well, th thank you very much for sharing that story with us. It's a bit uh, of an unusual one, or perhaps does it fit into what you described as a different type? So when she rushes for a glass of water and she... She's, get, she better. She's better. So, um, so from, what, from what I heard, from what she said, she says that uh, she needs to drink a glass of water during, during the day, but she has the seizures in the early hours of, of the morning. Right. Uh, seizures happening in the early hour of the morning is, 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 n is not unusual. It's yeah. more likely that someone is going to have a, a seizure yeah. um, around the time of falling to sleep and yeah. ar around that time. Um, and then, from what she said, she, once she started on Epilim, uh, she's now having less seizures, or it's it's low, uh, low frequency. So that that would be, um, it's it would be what right. we would expect with okay. uh, a, a medication like Epilim. All right. So we'll come back to medication and how this condition is treated. But let's first talk about you know the condition epilepsy and you know. Um, if you're diagnosed with epilepsy as a child, is it a lifelong thing? I mean, are you, are you going to have to be on treatment for the rest of your life? Um, and are there any possible complications, perhaps, that one can expect? We heard about, you know, the, this whole question of some children being disabled. Is there a link, perhaps, uh, between disability and, and epilepsy? So the... The, the link between disability and epilepsy can go both ways. Yeah. Um, there are certain types of epilepsy that uh, are refractory to treatment or difficult to treat, and then they can, it can cause uh, 
v uh, disability, usually cognitive in terms of how the person thinks as they, they grow up can, be de like, can deteriorate if it's not controlled. Okay. And then at the, at the same time, if someone gets any type of injury or insult to the brain, could be traumatic, it could be um, ischemic, um, it, 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 it could be, uh, it could have been from the mother's womb. All of those types of things can predispose someone to epilepsy as well. Okay. And so can be a cause as well. All right. Okay. So, so, so I'm sure, I mean, as you go around the country talking to people, uh, you do get questions like, so who's at risk of developing epilepsy? Are there any possible risk factors or causes? What do you guys uh, come across? Well, uh, anyone can get epilepsy, it's, but most of the people that we've seen, it's either genetic or, um, like the doctor said, from trauma. So either if someone's been in a car accident or they've gone through um, emotional trauma even, um, it's likely for epilepsy to develop. So I just want to go back to Marissa's tweet, yeah. um, that it's sudden death epilepsy. It's something that not a lot of people I talk see. about. That's yes. That's, yes. Okay. yes, it's something that not a lot of people talk about. If I can compare it to something, it's like, you know, cot death in babies. Right. So it's basically when somebody has epilepsy and they're sleeping, they would then die in their sleep from sudden death epilepsy. Well, that's an interesting one. Yeah, I've okay. read a few research articles and a yeah. few doctors have come to the conclusion it's due to cardiac arrest in the sleep while they having a seizure yeah so not so much from the epilepsy itself but yes. rather something yes. okay all right so it's a bit of a misnomer then to say sudden death epilepsy isn't that so i guess so yeah yeah all right so let's take vicky on the line in the meantime vicky welcome from johannesburg i'm told yeah yes i'm very happy to talk to you dr thank you ma'am i've got a grandchild yes a little girl of one year right some two weeks back she had convulsions Yes. They were having breakfast in the morning, and then they were running around with the brother. And suddenly, she fell on the floor. I, we thought she was choking right. because they were eating. Hmm. We noticed that she was convulsing, so we ran to hospital. You know, as she, you know, she got calm, and then they sent us back home without giving any treatment. And then we went to hospital three times that that Sunday. And then the fourth time was very vigorous. We were at home again. We ran to hospital for the first time. Then I asked the doctor to admit for observation. Then was admitted. And the, the next convulsion was at about 3 a.m. when they phoned us that he, he had a vigorous convulsion and was put on uh, river trail, IV. Mm. So now my worry is, is it going to continue um, okay. Because now she's on ethylene. All right. Okay. Well, well. Thank you so much for that question. Brilliant question, but it's a bit unusual that a child can be sent back uh, from hospital, especially the second time around. Your your comment? So uh, depends on who's receiving the the child, but yeah. um, generally, if someone has a seizure and they're brought for medical attention even though we may not start, for the first seizure that is, yeah. I, even though we may not start medication immediately, they should be investigated. Correct. And, um, and uh, imaging of the brain should be done, mm. um, blood investigations, uh, and those tests are, are mostly due to find if there's another cause yeah. of epilepsy, like a right. secondary cause, if there's something in the, in the brain, is the, the, if the calcium or one of the other electrolytes is not imbalanced yeah. th that type of thing and then an EEG should be done to right. determine the type of, okay. of epilepsy. So, so in this case I mean obviously uh, a diagnosis has been made the child is on treatment yes the grandmother's worry is you know will she be okay because she obviously was scared or at least worried about these vigorous convulsions sure your reassurance perhaps so in most cases of epilepsy, the medication is more than enough. One, one drug uh, is more than enough to decrease and to um, arrest further possible seizures. Yeah. Um, right. And it's very likely that the child will be better okay. since she's on the medication now. So we spoke earlier about risk factors and the possible causes. But this notion of people that are on treatment and um, there's this notion of a trigger for an epilepsy seizure. 
Any common examples we can think of? Yes, um, I, I know a lot of people with epilepsy struggle with regulating their emotions, particularly if a child gets too excited or too, is too sad. Um, sometimes epilepsy can be also linked to major depressive disorder. Um, so people living with MDD um, have a tendency of developing epilepsy because they cannot regulate their emotions independently. Mm. Um, so it, it, one of the triggers is emotions, diets, incorrect diet, if you have you know, too much caffeine, too much sugar, um, those type of things, it can also trigger epilepsy. Okay. Of course, we want people to watch this, this program on television. But there's this notion of flashlights. Yes, yes. flashing lights. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you remember um, The Incredibles. It's an animation video, animation movie. And I think it was in 1997. It's also an animation called Pokemon. Yeah. And what happened in Japan is when they aired this show, this Pokemon show, there were like 300, 400 children going into hospital with seizures. Mm. So what happened is they had, they had a reaction to like photosensitive epilepsy. Mm. So even children that didn't have epilepsy had a reaction to the flashing lights from the show that they were watching. Yeah. Another trigger can be uh, stress, heat, um, uh, dehydration, mm. Um, uh, what else I was going to say now? Yeah. So, so, so quite a lot of other stuff. Yes, there's uh, a few. I'm sure you'd agree with that. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, yeah. So, so s stress is a, a trigger in extraordinary circumstances, but uh, co commonly it's not enough for most people to develop right. uh, a seizure, and it's only considered uh, a trigger with people with epilepsy. All right. Well, I think on this, it's a this point that I'm going to have to say thank you very much uh, to you, Mohammed and Linda from uh, Epilepsy Awareness Africa. Time for a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue our discussion on epilepsy. Please stay with us. We are at the forefront of Africa's attack discussion. We're already planning for the 5G spectrum to be licensed by 2020. In Mauritius, for fiber migration, we had a strategy. On network, we have a gadget, a robot, and more. We focus on investing in entrepreneurs and technology in emerging markets. Less technology and social media news on network with Luis Pumel and Zondi every Saturday at 8.30 p.m. and every Sunday at 5.30 p.m. When it comes to what's hot and fresh, we've got our finger on the pulse. Get your hearts racing, your hands clapping, and your feet tapping because Elive Amp in a vibe. So come and dance and bosh all yourself to Live Amp Fridays at half past seven only on SABC One Zanti for sure. Come and come and dance. Right, so welcome back and thank you so much for staying with us. If you've just joined us, we're talking epilepsy with our special guest, Dr. Prakash Kaden, who's a neurologist based at the Vets Donald Gordon Medical Center. And we're now joined by another, no stranger to this show, Kandas Kandawira, who's a social worker from Epilepsy South Africa. Welcome to Health Talk. Kandas. Thank you, Doc, for right. having me. And last but not least is Bridget Masuku. Uh, Bridget is living with epilepsy, but Bridget is a lecturer at the Tswane University of Technology. She's an inspirational speaker and she's an author. She's going to tell us about all of that. But for now, uh, epilepsy. Welcome to Health Talk. Bridget. Thank you, Doc. All right. Uh, before we, we, we start chatting, we, we do have about you know two more tweets that we're going to go up, go through. Uh, the one says, thank you, God, for allowing me to live a normal life after battling with epilepsy for 30 years. And the other one, um, if we can just get it up for now, says, Our wee man has been through a lot since he started taking seizures at five months, but he's always happy. He makes us laugh every day. 
don't post about it too often, but if it raises awareness of epilepsy, it's worth doing it. Also, sweet. Eh? Yeah. All right. So, and then of course we have. Do we still have Sheila on the line from Johannesburg? Hello, Sheila, yes. Sheila, welcome to Health Talk. Hello. Hello, Sheila. Yes. Um, well, my comment rather is that Jack, my oldest son, yes. well, he had it his first seizure when he was three and a half, but I knew what was going on. And then I took him to the hospital for a lumbar puncture. But um, the medication didn't agree with him because he was also very hyperactive. I come from a hyperactive family. Right. So I don't know if that has a connection. And also I used to suffer, I suffer from migraine. Is that any relation, you know? Okay. Mm. Well, yeah, thank you for, for those brilliant questions. Thanks, Sheila. Let's hear what uh, Dr. Kenan says. Firstly, any link between ADHD and epilepsy? And secondly, any link between migraine and epilepsy? So, um, with ADHD and epilepsy, I'm not sure the exact da data on it, but um, th there's not, there's a, as for in the adult population, adolescent population, we don't encounter that much of a, mm -hmm. of, of a link. Yeah. Um, and then in terms of migraine, in certain disorders, there is a relationship between the two, but on the whole, they're not usually together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Okay, so, so we do know that epilepsy can impact people in various other ways. And um, here to tell us about how it has impacted her personally, let's welcome uh, Bridget. Bridget, tell us about yourself. You... We'll come back to the oh. other bit about what you <laughs> okay. do. Let's talk about epilepsy. For okay, yeah. so I was born in 1974, right. December. Right. I became epileptic in 1984, January, so right. at nine. Mm. And then I'm turning 45 and I'm still living with it. Wow. It hasn't yeah. impacted me much because uh, when I was doing primary, I, I would collapse and then, because I have uh, generalized. I would collapse, stay home three days, and go back to school. Right. Prima higher primary is still the same, yeah. high school the same. When I went to tertiary, it didn't bother me much. Okay. And then I did my diploma, BTEC degree, and then master's degree. Yeah. I, I work as a lecturer. I've been working for 18 years. Yeah. I'm fine, I drive, I have children. It, it really does not. Right. It right. comes about twice in a year. Okay. And I, I get my fees during the night most of the time, right. like 99% of the times. So it really, I'm on medication, another thing, yeah. Epilem 500. Yeah. So it really hasn't. That's a wonderful story. Yes. I mean, yeah. so if I, could, I could, if I could just pick up one or two things that you said, mm -hmm. is that during your schooling time, yes. possible impact is loss of school days as a result of epilepsy. Intelligence. Even if I have to say so myself. <laughs> yeah. Well, yes. yeah. But, but I mean, you, you've gone on to even, you know, get degrees. But I never failed. Yeah. Yes. That's the thing. So, so. so we can't really say that, you know, it's got no. an impact on intelligence. Yes, that's why yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm just saying maybe I am intelligent because I, yeah. I, I would do school for three days oh, and I then I would go back. Okay. Yes. yes. Right. Yes. Right. Right. Then tell us about the fact that, you know, obviously we understand that you're a lecturer in yes. yes. technology. Yes. And you're an inspirational speaker. Yes. What do you speak to people about? Okay, so what happened in, in 2014 is that it's, it's a longer story, but then I'll, I'm, I'm going to cut it short. Yeah. I, I had a brain tumor. Yeah. And then it was taken out, but then complications occurred afterwards. I had what we call pseudobarbar effect. It, it, like my brain started working in reverse. Yeah. And then when they were trying to treat that, I got to the barber palsy. Yeah. My face locked. Yeah. I got locked in syndrome. All my, like, all my muscles on my body locked. Yeah. I got, and then uh, the doctors were saying 90% with locked in syndrome. 90% of the people die, 10% yeah. come out alive. And then I got central pontine myelinolysis. 
Well, what, I think what you should, a, no. Yes, well, we'll yeah, turn so the things like that. And then, then the doctors were saying, I won't leave, I'm going yeah. to be a carriage, you know. Yeah. And then I won't ever walk. They told my husband to take me to a hospice. Yeah. And then, by so, so, so essentially, you inspire people about that what you've been through. You can through. never lose hope. You're living with Regardless epilepsy. of what anybody says, yeah. you know, yeah. you can yeah. never listen to people. As long as you believe that you can, yeah. you can. Wow. Okay, we, I believe we have a caller on the line. I just didn't get the name. Do, do we still have the caller? Percy, Percy on the line. Percy, welcome. How are you, sir? We're good. How are you? Thank you very much, sir. Mm -hmm. Actually, sir, what I want to find out, sir, yeah. I've been taking Epilin since 2011. Right. 200, Epilin 200. Yeah. What is happening on my case? Uh, I had a stroke in 2000. I had a stroke again in 2014. Right. So many a time I'm having the seizures. I do fall down when I wake up, my left side is not working. Yeah. And I've got a, a, a CVA that the doctor told me many a times. Sir. So I've been taking this medication many a times. Now my leg, my, 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 my knee, it's sore. Yeah. They've diagnosed me that I've got uh, uh, hypothyroidism. Yeah. Does this all things uh, come out of this? This cheese that are coming out of epilims or what? This is really confusing me now. All right. Okay. Th th thank you for that question. It's a bit of a complicated one, uh, um, <laughs> Doc. Uh, your response to that? I mean, he. He, he's on 200 milligrams of epilim and he still has seizures. Sounds to me like, uh, you know, I mean, you, you're the expert. Sure. Yeah. Well, I think, uh, well, you're also a doctor, so yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I think it does sound like the epilim dose may be too low for, yeah. Yeah. for usually an adult man. Right. Um, I think in terms of what he told us, he has uh, post-stroke epilepsy mm. and the area that, in, uh, that um, infarcted or got had a stroke is now uh, also triggering seizures mm. so um, in in terms of that I don't think it's related to the what he described as the arthritis though yeah yeah but what should he do then I think he should contact uh, his doctor or a neurologist yeah. and uh, yeah. possibly they can optimize the medication better right, right. Kandas, let, let's just hear from you I mean there's also psychosocial aspects, you know, relating to the condition and, you know, yes, uh, no. the people that are affected, the families around. Perhaps you want to give us a, a few comments around that. Thanks, Doc. Just to take a cue from uh, Bridget on my left-hand side here, uh, it, it is important for someone to understand the condition, right. you know, on its own. And secondly, it is important, you know, for one to have support from the family when we go out there to the community, we encourage uh, people with epilepsy to congregate. We meet them in support groups. This is an environment, a platform where we educate them about the condition. And we also talk about the importance of medication, obviously in, co in collaboration with the nursing personnel uh, or health practitioners in the clinics. Mm. So it is critical that people with epilepsy should be provided support that they need. Yeah. And uh, again, to recognize them as normal people like any other person. Yeah. A person with epilepsy has a challenge only at the time when the seizure occurs. Exactly. Right. Okay. We're going to know, about, know yeah. more about that because yeah. I'd like also to find out about what support is given to the family around the person. Mm -hmm. But for now, time for a quick break. When we come back, we'll wrap up our discussion on epilepsy and look at treatment at this time. Please stay with us. Nigeria, the most populous country in Africa and one of the largest economies on the continent going to elections. Being a first time voter, it's, I should be happy but I'm not happy because the two candidates aren't what I expected. Hey, being a first time voter, I'm very excited because it's not something I've done before. So I want to be able to choose my leader and it's the first time I'm going to do it, so I'm excited. Nigeria decides. Watch SABC News for updates.
The Drakensberg is the name given to the eastern portion of Great Escarpments, which encloses the central southern Africa plateau. The name means Drakensberg in Afrikaans and is called Ukasamba in Isizulu, which means barrier of spears. The Drakensberg Escarpment stretches for over a thousand kilometers from Eastern Cape, then forms the border between Lesotho and the Eastern Cape, and the border between Lesotho and KwaZulu Natal. It then forms the border between KwaZulu Natal and the Free State, and next as the border between KwaZulu Natal and Mpumalanga. It winds north through Mpumalanga, where it includes features such as Blade River Canyon, three rendezvous and God's Window. The Drakensberg is the highest mountain range in the country, reaching 3,482 meters above sea level. Okay, welcome back. We're still talking epilepsy with our guest, Dr. Prakash Kaden, neurologist, vet, Donald Gordon Medical Center, Kandas Kandawire, social worker from Epilepsy South Africa, Bridget Masuku, living with epilepsy, and uh, lecturer, author, and inspirational speaker. Now, we have uh, a caller on the line, and we have two tweets. Let's go through the first one. Whoop, whoop. Next month, Joshua will be 12 months seizure-free, and it's been a great success compared to this time next year with his epilepsy. He makes me super proud. That's a very oh, proud great. parent there. And uh, the last one, um, so if you see someone having a seizure, check their belongings. Do they have a medical aid card? Are they carrying medicine? The instructions for my emergency medication are in the tube. Or well, clearly, this is somebody living with, with epilepsy. Yeah. All right, let's take Nazira from, from Devon. Nazira, welcome. Hello, good morning. How are you? We're good. How are you, Nazira? I'm well, thank you. I am honored that you're having the show, really, really, right. really. I have a question. It's been 23 years now that I've been suffering with epilepsy. Right. Unfortunately, my ex-husband, he uh, pushed me back and I hit the back of my head. And, uh, I, and from that same time, I developed seizures. Right. And after that, I never stopped getting seizures. Every month, I must get it two or three months. But at least now, I've been getting it a month, at least once a month. Right. And my medication is Epilem, 1,200 of milligrams every morning, 1,200 of milligrams uh, every night. And I've been taking the controller um, as well. Now, you tell me, um, does that medication has any effect? Because I've noticed that now my eyes are getting weak, and I usually get my epilepsy, my attacks in the night always. And when I get up, I don't know anything. All right. Okay. Thank you very much, Nazira. Let's. Sleep, and I also have to sleep out the whole day because of my migraine today. Okay. All right. But thank Th you very much. If you can just tell me more about that medication because it's okay. been the last 23 years I've been on it. Let's thank get Dr. Kaden to thank you so much for your question, Dr. Kaden. You um, you heard Nazira. Yes. So um, she said that she's been on Epilum for about tw 23 years. Uh, in, in terms of what she's saying about her eyes, I'm not aware of um, a side effect uh, that would uh, progress with time regarding that. Uh, but in general with Epilim, the main side effects we worry about are weight gain and also um, in childbearing ladies, it yeah. can interfere with uh, pr the, the child as, as it's in a womb. Yeah. And then also liver dysfunction. Those are the main um, issues with that that medication. Perhaps let's come back to the issue of treatment principles. Yes. We've heard a lot about medication. Are there any other forms of treatment? So there are, for, uh, th there are um, other forms of treatment, but uh, the reason why medication is talked about the most is because it's the most common, mm -hmm. and generally if we could control seizures with medication, that, that would, would be, be the best thing for the patient. The right. other forms of 
treatment is uh, also surgical yeah. um, and then there's two types di targeted epilepsy surgery yeah. for a possible focal lesion triggering seizures yeah. or there's also uh, vagal nerve stimulation right. which can help Kandas, you I think you mentioned this earlier I mean the importance of taking medication on a daily basis regularly yes. and going back to your doctors just come back to that aspect again yeah, Doc, uh, it, it is critical for a person living with epilepsy to understand the importance of medication. In some communities, you'll find that the person is on treatment and the person feels that he's not getting cured yeah. you know, of, of his or her seizures. Yeah. And the person decides to stop the medication. Yeah. We advise people not to do that, but to consult the, their doctors, their sisters at the clinic yeah. so that... Uh, that there should be a continuity in terms of treatment yeah. regime. Right, all right. Bridget, I, I wanted to give you the last 30 seconds, Varan. Yes. Uh, it's unfortunate that we've run out of time. <laughs> I want to just thank you so much, um, you know, for firstly agreeing to be part of the show. Okay. And the work that you continue doing. Thank you so uh, much. Inspire, continue to inspire mm -hmm. a whole lot of people. Thank you so much, uh, Kandas Kandavira, and thank, thank you so you much, uh, Dr. Kevin. Thank you. And you guys at home, thank you so much for staying with us. And, um, yeah, I hope that uh, you've learned as much as I did. And I do know that um, <laughs> the one thing that I left out, perhaps, that I have to mention about Bridget is that she's an author. We did say she's written a book. And, um, yeah, we'll tell you all about it. There it's on the screen. And uh, perhaps you can grab a copy for yourself. Okay. Well, so on this note that we end our show today, we're back on the screen again next week, same time. Uh, my name is Dr. Silomoteung. Until then, please do take care.